Anxiety has taken over the world quite a lot over the last few years, especially with COVID. And as we try and learn different ways to deal with anxiety, on today's show, I'm going to be speaking to someone who's become quite an expert with breathing and being able to turn breathing into a way to deal with anxiety. <laughs> Hi, this is Joey Buzzertill and welcome to the Secret Men's Business Podcast. On today's show, we're going to be speaking to Hans Bend and he's going to be speaking to us about his breathing technique, the way that he dealt with his anxiety and more importantly, a new AI that is created to help people to deal with anxiety. Hans, how are you? Good. Thank you so much for having me. Look at that beautiful background. Where are, where are you at the moment? I'm in Queens, New York at a marina. I yeah. thought it would be nice to have a beautiful background so in case like what, what I'm talking about is boring, people can just mute me and watch the background. Well, it definitely won't be boring, but the background is beautiful because we're in winter here and so you're making us jealous. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> be before we start, do you want to just tell the audience a little bit about, about yourself, like your background and, and things like that? Yeah, hi, I'm Hannes and uh, I grew up in Norway and Germany and uh, I had actually... Uh, birth trauma so I had a very like decades of depression and anxiety after that without knowing it because it was kind of almost my my natural state so I I, w I struggled a lot with it even when I was like exhibiting artist and researcher award winning researcher and it was never you know fame or success that brought me any kind of resolution to that and I still had to struggle with you know like the daily like you know shortness of breath and like you know social anxiety and and just being not comfortable in my own skin in many ways. So I really uh, delved a lot into uh, physiotherapy, yoga, meditation, and then especially breath work helped me to live a healthy and happy life and then also run my a small business, my technology company. Um, so we're yeah, just like a young startup where we have patented AI technology and that's detecting breathing and then also personalizes our screens to give us break reminders. Um, so without additional screen time, without additional wearables. So just very simple to help people, you know, like in like 20 seconds to two minutes just to feel a little bit better because I feel oftentimes it's like creating habits, you know. For me, it was kind of, you know, being aware, coming <clears throat> aware of my breathing, becoming aware of my posture that, you know, sometimes I'm too tense, I'm breathing too shallow. How can I just do that? And like, I think reminders and like having technology adapt to us is like a is a way that you know makes us more simple before we go into your uh, your business and your breathing techniques i wanted to ask you like what do you think caused you what was your reason for getting anxious like what was happening in your life at the time that you may have ignored like i'm a therapist because i also had um chronic anxiety about 16 years ago and i did i did for me i didn't leave my bedroom for like three months i just hid from the world um, so for you, what was your, um, and yeah, mine was because of a relationship breakup. So what was your reasoning why you experienced it, do you think? Is it, was it is that something that you've had all the time or was it uh, something that happened? Yeah, no, I, I was not really aware that I had some, that I almost felt like everybody was feeling anxious and depressed all the time. I mean, as a kid, it wasn't so severe, but I had birth trauma. So I, I was actually... My, they told the doctors told my parents that I had mild cerebral palsy and that I might end up in a wheelchair. So they did a very intense physiotherapy with me, and you know, but that kind of like pain of the physiotherapy was called Voita method in the first year. Probably, you know, left a lot of like physical trauma and also psychological trauma because there were people causing me pain the whole day, even though they, you know they did that to care for me. Yeah. So was it? And, was, it quite, was it quite rough? Was it like was it? Yeah, Hands very on. rough. If you right. if you look Voita Voita method is a uh, it's a very rough like the babies are crying uh, because they get bent around just in order to have that um, motor functions, you know. Wow. Um, and it's yeah, it's very it's very intense. And until I saw that footage on YouTube of you know of babies experiencing that Voita method, I just, like I wasn't really like oh what's that you know it can't be that harsh. But then I was like I, I was in tears when I saw those babies experiencing that, yes. and then. You know, and then obviously, like that birth trauma um, was also left an, an impact. So I, I didn't know. And then I was like, and then I was the shortest in class. So I was like bullied a lot in school. And then, uh, you know, and then like the teenage year, that bad acne. So like it was all coming together. You know? <laughs> everybody, everybody was dating and I was just at home, you know, hiding with my very bad <laughs> acne and, and my, you know, and my depression. So and I didn't know, you know, like they said, like you have depression. But it's like I never really felt much different. I always felt very disconnected from the world and and very unhappy. So. I, you know, for me, 
but I, I didn't know that it was that was for different feeling from well, what other no people one, would no feel. One really, so. No one really knew. We didn't really call or label things so, back then, did we? Like, if you were yeah. depressed, people would sure. just look at you and say, what's wrong with him? So yeah, it, it wasn't, you know, really, it's hard to think back to that time when we were younger and to think that we, did, like, how sure. no one knew anything and people suffered. So how did you... Yeah. Um, like, how, what do you think is the reason why people in the world nowadays are, are experiencing anxiety or more depression? What's your take on it? Because you're, you know, you're doing a lot of work with people and with breath work. So what's the reason that you think the world has become more anxious rather than becoming less anxious? Yeah, I, I mean, I, it's hard to say, like, if they become more anxious because, like, I, you know, I, I felt like, you know, I feel less anxious than I felt before, but I see people a lot of yeah. like, times talk talking about it. So I wonder if it's like, are people feeling more anxious or are they becoming more aware that, you know, there there is like a certain kind of unhappiness and anxiousness in the world? And That's a good point. but I do, I do, but I, 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 my personal opinion is like you, like what you just said, that probably people are feeling more anxious and depressed because there's a lot of stress with work. There's, it's like hard to talk about emotions. It's hard to talk, find like you know everybody's so busy it's hard to find you know the personal connections i think like i had you know in the 80s and 90s even with my friends it was just like different time we spent with each other than these days it's just you yeah. know urban life you don't like have spent that much quality yeah. time with each other and then and then obviously you know like that kind of like technology is very disconnected i think from our bodies and we do interact with technologies more yeah so it's always like i, I have think to... i agree with you i think that's that's to me, I remember that when the iPhone came out, and I'm not blaming Apple or anything, but when the iPhone came out, I think that's when I noticed, it was about 2007 or eight, and things started to change from there. Because, you know, as a therapist, I would think that the, I'd be seeing less, but there's, it just keeps more and more and more. And I guess you and I have gone through our experiences, and that's why we're now in positions of teaching and helping people. But um, do you think that COVID is going to, cause a bigger spike i mean i i'm actually kind of surprised that it's not like right now seems like it's, it's, it's worse than it it is right now but because like isolation is very hard for a lot of people right then it was like a french philosopher say like the hardest problem of mankind is that they can't sit still in a room or something you know that they're always like miserable then and you know we had to do it for such a long time and but i i, I guided a breathwork session yesterday in the park as part of a public art event and for four hours and there were people coming in and out and they were in tears and but for joy and also release and stuff and and you know a few said it, it you know i felt like i was holding so much tension and pressure inside you know and they feel like it relieved a lot of that especially from the last year you know where people are not really sharing that and so that was very inspiring to hear that you know um and that, that's always brings me to greatest joy, you know, like sharing practices that make yeah. people like transform something to a happier state and become aware of something and, and mm. learning those tools, how to feel better. But uh, yeah, I do think it did, did have a huge impact, especially, you know, obviously with like all the lives lost and so much and, gratitude and, and, for and all the funds. And teenagers as well, with teenagers. Have, you oh, know, yeah. I think it's, you hit a point there where you said that people were in lockdown and they were sitting, they couldn't sit still and they were forced so do you think that, that there is a bit of, um, I don't like the word lazy, but there's a little bit of, you know, a lack of awareness. And now people are becoming more aware. Like, I can't believe how many times people say, I ask people, do you meditate? And they say, mm -hmm. no, oh, I, I don't like that. So it is interesting how now people are changing. So maybe your point is, I think your point is correct, that it's an awareness thing. People are becoming more aware that they're not as happy or not living the lives that they want compared to, say, five and ten years ago. So you've noticed yourself that people are becoming more open to it. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think like, I mean, personally, myself, I didn't really talk about this 10 years ago. I would have gone to, you know, like my way, like 12 years ago, I would have gone to a bar, you know, like had some drinks with friends and just forgot about, you know, and it'd be yeah. like next day, I was like, oh, hangover, I don't feel so well, but it's <laughs> probably too many drinks, you know, but it wasn't really like right now it'd be like, you know, no, I'm not going to like take something to get myself away from it. I talk about it. And I think a lot of people having having a similar um experience you know they're, they're talking about it they might not have learned the tools how to cope with it but they're already having starting the process of talking about it sharing about it or becoming aware of it themselves and i think that's it's beautiful to see and to always hear yeah that's good so for you you said that you would have gone to the bar and you would have been with friends so obviously something happened so i mm -hmm. think listeners uh, i love sharing that story with people how people click like so what was your nice. introduction to 
something else, you know? The bar's not working for me. I need to do something else. Did you, was it a person or did you read a book? How did you then mm-hmm. cross over to the other side? Yeah, I love that, yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, I, I was in a, in a relationship also like you, so it's interesting like how we're in similarity. So, yeah. And, you know, I was not happy with like, you know, my career, even though it was, I was pretty, you know, getting more known as an artist, but it was like, it was never really happy. And then the relationship, I was, she was a wonderful woman, uh, incredible. And, you know, I was not happy there, but it was not, then we broke up and, you know, it was a mutual breakup, but I was very sad. And then she actually left a yoga mat there. And I remember a friend of mine always said like, you know, why don't you try yoga or meditation? And it's like, wow. oh, probably good for you, you know? And my friend was, she was, she knew me so well, but I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. You know, let's meet up at the bar. <laughs> and then, you know, and then, and then I was like, oh, now, you know, my, my girlfriend w- went back to her home country and left his yoga mat i might just as well like try it out you know like who, you know maybe that will help me and so um you know aside from this wonderful memories we shared there was a there was an interesting gift you know this kind of like this blue yoga mat and so i i started to yoga do yoga and i got really in depth into that and then next step was meditation and next step was breath work but it, it was a very really very very intense practice so i did it like hours every it. day but yeah, we, we, I think you're right. We, you, are, you and I are identical because I had a similar experience. Like, you know, I had a, a breakup and then all of a sudden I found a gateway into something. And every day I say, thank you, God, for making me go through that experience. Because if I didn't oh. go through that, I wouldn't be here, right? So it's funny how a lot of guys would have answered the same way as you. I'm not doing yoga. Uh, you know, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And then, and then the, what, did you have a big surprise? Did you actually go, oh, my God, this is good? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I found it the the first time. Uh, the first time I did yoga, I, I immediately what was it? I thought about my property at home, and then it was weird. Like, why do I think about my property at home? And then I came home, and and somebody broke into my home and stole stuff. And I was just like, wait, that was so weird. I was thinking about my property in the yoga wow. class, and then next yoga classes, I was just like, I always felt better too. Of course, like after yoga, mm-hmm. I felt like a sense of relief of of opening you know stretch my muscles obviously with all the burst trauma and the tension i was holding in my body it was just like it was torture for me to do do yoga but afterwards i felt so much better than before and then another yoga class i was thinking about whales i mean i always loved whales since a kid but then but then the the next song the yoga teacher was playing was a whale song it's like no. oh my god this is like wild you know it could just be coincidence of course but you know no, coincidences you, are I also think that, like i think that you tapped into you opened yourself up you know What you said is a very important thing that I have been sharing and I think other guests have shared is that when you were going to the bar, you were living your life on the surface, right? And thinking Mm -hmm. that you could deal with stuff. And then when you actually went to yoga, you found a way to to go deeper, which obviously tapped into, you know, some spiritual connection that you have to energy, which you obviously have a really good one because you manifest exactly what you're thinking within 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 an hour or so. Um, Tell us a little bit about your experience with Winhoff and the Iceman and how, because uh, I love him. And when I saw that you did oh, work yeah. with him, I thought, okay, this is going to be a good interview. Um, cause <laughs> I, I really think that his technique can help with anxiety really, really a lot. So how did yeah. you come across him and how did you find that technique? Yeah, I love him. I mean, uh, like Wim and his family, so much gratitude to them. Um, I worked in neuroscience for an art science project, um, studying meditation also, uh, 2014-15 in Oregon. And I, we, we compared different meditation techniques. I was like, nobody's comparing them in real time. Let's do this. And then this fellow researcher said, like, do, have you heard of this study where they injected people with E. coli bacteria and did this breathing technique? And then I read the, that it was Vim's technique, the study on Vim's practice. And I was just like, I work with such good researchers, like my, Dr. Michael Posner, National Medal of Science winner and stuff. And others, and I was just like, so I was very trained in very critical research. And and then I read this paper and it was like, it was mind blowing. It was a really good paper. It was a very solid study. And it was like, who is this guy who comes up to scientists like Vim, you know, and mm. So I got really into that. And then obviously I also later on the Vice documentary and stuff, I saw that. And so, um, you know, I got in contact with him then like right after I saw the study uh, with his with his family. And I think I was the first one who organized the workshop for him in New York. So wow. I organized a workshop. People were flying, I think, from all over the world. We we then then I met Vim first time in person. It was like 2015 or 16. And then um, 
and then yeah there's like a helping them here we worked at some new york we met in, in europe did like a AR augmented reality biofeedback project together um filmed a lot of and, vr and how, did stuff. It, how did it work with how did you find it helping you um because i know oh, that yeah, some yeah, people yeah, so, struggle yeah, with yeah, the cold yeah. part right yeah, like so, did, it, did it help you through anxiety with the, or depression no, like, it, yeah I'm, the one thing with Vim is also like obviously like I was very like mind blowing by the study, but I started to jump into the Willamette River, which is like ice cold in Oregon in the winter, right away, and and did the breathing of course before that, and and did the breathing hours a day, and I had such transformative experiences. Like I I was shaking for hours, and that was probably had to do with like you know my birth trauma. I was like mm. it was it was not the shaking of fifteen minutes people have, but it was really for hours. But I knew it was something, or it felt. It was something releasing something, so I kept doing it, even though sometimes I felt weaker the first weeks. But then I felt like so much more happiness. Like, and I did years of vipassana meditation before. That's two or three hours a day, and then those hundred-hour meditation retreats, multiple times. So, with Vim's technique, I was getting all the so many benefits of feeling better right away. Mm. And um, and I just wanted to share that. You know, I wanted to study that more. I wanted to share it more. Like, obviously, invite Vim to have him do more workshops and share his technique through technologies and stuff and um yeah and that, like i mean like i felt like the more i did it and the more i became aware of my breathing and then it became almost like that breathing when it became integrated into my daily life mm. so so now it's easy to go into a cold shower and stuff and have this deep breathing awareness but it's really like this kind of you know habit of making it a practice and it's uh, yeah i'm so eternally grateful for vim and his work you know like yeah. it's it's amazing so i mean you you highlighted it again and a, a lot of things there in regards to which i really love that you brought them up because this is the, the key the information i think is easy isn't it we can say win hoff we can say breathing but what you said was that you were even though you were feeling unwell or sick you still did the river right even though mm -hmm. you were dealing with certain things, you still persisted. So that to me is what I really want people to understand. Like what was your, what, how did you do that? For example, when you were feeling unwell and you thought, oh, I don't want to get out of bed, it's cold, but you did it yeah. anyway. What do you think was your factor to do that? Was it your, like, did you have a mantra or did you have a vision of where you wanted to go or what was the yeah. was helping you? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a very smart question um, because I haven't asked myself that in a while, but why did it? Because I remember I was living on a boat actually back then and six years ago or something at the Oregon to, you know, save money to put, I put my own money into the research too, because I believed in it so much, but I, I was on a boat and I was like, why should I jump in the river now? You know? And then I was like, I just got to do it. You know, like I, you got to trust the science, you know, trust the work of him. You know, he's been doing that for decades and it's just like, you know, like the persistence, you know, and then kind of staying with it, you know, sometimes you think like, Oh, I should take a day off and, you know, sometimes that might work better. Maybe I'm just very rigid or sometimes maybe I was pushing it no, too much. No, but, I, well, you know, I think that you, like... you're highlighting that you wanted, I think that you're just highlighting that you wanted to be better. Oh, just like, can I just one thing? Like, I yeah. mean, I think Vim would be okay with sharing that because I think I said it and he said it in podcast too. It was just him and like, I, he was driving the car through Europe. I was like the bi driver. And I was like, you know, I was like, what do you think it is? Like the brown fat activation or whatever, you know? And then Vim says like, no, to you know to make you feel warm when it's cold because i was like so many people were speculating and here i am you know with vim the ice man in the car i can just ask him directly and then vim said like no it's all will it's like yeah. what this well, guy who's been you know like in <laughs> ice cubes immersed in a museum for hours and like walk mount everest in shorts you know like not all the way to the top but you know good way like nobody else like no other human doing being at least i know or i've seen like has it done tells me it's all will you know and that's also like it is a lot, Will, you know, and we, you, you are kind of like wanting that change for oneself and, and then committing oneself, holding oneself accountable to that. So sometimes I was just by myself, but you know, if there's accountability, accountability partners and stuff like this these days. So I think those are very, very uh, good tools and, and good, you know, relationships to have holding each other accountable and, and making sure that, that it's a practice and a habit. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm very jealous that you're in this, you're in this car. How dare you? <laughs> you know, you, you obviously, if everyone I've spoken to that has met Wim has all said the same thing, how easy he is, uh, you know, in the earlier days, I actually spoke to him online, but I, I think now he's really famous, right? So you met him at a time when, you know, it, it's, it's very, you're very lucky, put it that way. But um, <laughs> I think that, I think that that will part, because I followed him a lot. I remember seeing him for the first time 
in the mountains, snow everywhere, and he's wearing speedos, right? And I'm going, uh-huh. what is this guy doing? He's going to die. <laughs> but what I took away from him was that you, because he was talking about the cold, right? And he said, well, why don't attach, don't call it cold. It's just what it is, right? So that to me was my, um, I went into head first into trying to understand mm-hmm. uh, acceptance and mm-hmm. surrender, right? So when mm-hmm. you surrender, then that's where I find for me, that's where will lives. Mm-hmm. You know, you've mm-hmm. got no, no voice in your head. You're just doing what you have to do and you accept it and mm-hmm. you know it's part of you. So um, so why do you think, Case, yeah. yeah, why do you think breathing, because your, your practice is very much around breathing, why do you feel mm-hmm. that breathing is the key to helping with mental health? Yeah, and first of all, I would just want to take a notion on what you just said. Like, I think it's like a lot of that is faith. Like, if you if, if there's sometimes like a skepticism in us, like, should I do this? And then there's all it's always the test. Like th- those last moments of like you do a practice in a cold shower, should I go in there? It's that's always the test. Otherwise, it will be so easy to be happy all the time and healthy. Yes. It's always this test of like this inner voice saying like, should you really do this? You know, why don't you just like you know lie that's on the it. couch, you know, blanket? And I feel like that's also the part of like trusting and have like faith in god or love or whatever you like humanity or divine entities whatever somebody and, and also trusting the people who came before like them you know they, they have a human body they, they put that human body through those experiences and and shown us what is what we're capable of and trusting those people who who you know live a li- live alive in love you know and live for the love of people and i think that's vim has really shown that you know he's such a caring person um so um and there's a lot of other good people out there so um well, so, so just you like you were, you know you were with him and now you're <clears throat> passing it forward i think that's the beauty of this is that you're simply saying that you know we're this is it this is our life you can either live in misery right or you can you know you can do whatever whatever it takes because i'm guessing that the 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 jumping in cold water isn't for everyone right but some Mm people most people would would respond to that so i think that Mm -hmm. it's everyone's responsibility to seek what's going to make them happy rather than being victims or being sad so yeah did did you then take the go on sorry no but it's also like uh, to answer your question before on breathing it's i think it is maybe breathing doesn't work for everybody. Obviously, I, I, I believe that it probably would, um, <laughs> it but does. because because I think it's a it's a it's a physiological thing we all share, like similar to walking. Um, hey, what's up? Sorry, it's my neighbor. Um, so uh, so it's kind of you know like learning how to breathe better. It's almost like learn how to walk faster or like you know have a better posture is like one thing, but you know. Just so if we have a better posture, we breathe better. And if you, if you, anybody who watches it right now takes a deep breath, especially expanding the belly first, and just a letting go exhale, you know, just something simple like this, a deep inhale, and just a sigh, breathes twice as much air flowing in. And there's studies on that, like a simple sigh, just like a... And what does study up. say? What does it actually say it does? I think it's from the UCLA and I think they labeled it um, like an article on that also like without a sigh, we would die, you know, like if we wouldn't sigh multiple times during the day, our lung wings would be so clunked together because the alveoli, the 500 million alveoli we have in there, so-called, um, they would clunk together. So we would literally die if we wouldn't sigh. And we oftentimes do it automatically. And people say like, because humans know that it's a sign of relief and of opening. So they, sometimes we ask them, are you okay when somebody sighs? Because, they were, because we know intuitively somebody was holding a lot of oh, tension wow. in there. Yeah. So if we, like, if we learn how to breathe deeper on the inhale and then also take a simple sigh, and if we practice that through the Wim Hof method and like, you know, other practices, then we, we create more awareness of that. And for me, it's kind of like the breathing breath connection is not trained, you know? So, if we strengthen that muscle from the brain to the breast, we strengthen that muscle in our daily life. So then we are more aware of it, you know? So if we, similar to all kinds of other, right? Learning how to walk and, you know, then we, then we know how that muscle functions. It's the same with breathing. If we learn how to breathe better, like it's almost like our body knows, hey, this makes me feel happier and healthier. Like I'm going to do this all the time, you know? And I'm going to notify the mind, the brain, when they're not, when you know this when this being here is not breathing properly and you know and so that's that's what brought me like such joy i always like when there's stressful situation I'm, you know i have that awareness of my breathing and i'll be like you know take a deep breath like let it go and that's why people always say humans across cultures and and nations you know it's like they say like oh let's take a deep breath and then you know this and it's 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 a saying but it's hopefully it becomes more of a practice that people do yeah. that all the time you know and mm. And it's also, yeah. it's free, right? And that's the thing. People don't yeah. realize that 
doing what you just said is so easy and it's free, right? But there is, I, don't, I still don't, I, I don't understand why, you know, we go to dentists, we go and see a doctor, we hurt our wrist. But when it comes to our mind, people struggle to accept that this simple tech, this simple thing. So if you were speaking to an audience, like my listeners that aren't into breathing and uh, meditating, what would be the way that you would, what would you say to them in regards to um, like what, how they can change their life with it? Because people do have, I hear this all the time, I can't do it, mm-hmm. right? I can't yeah. do it. I get that. Do you get that a lot too? Yeah, I mean, it like, like, you know, say like when people see both of us, right? You know, like we both went through like harsh, you know, situations in our life and then we were doing it. So I like, you know, I'm, you know, mm. please don't be as stupid as me to having to put yourself, you know, That's through more I misery in, in well. order to do that. You yeah. know, so just like try give yourself, you know, like 20, 30 minutes each day, you know, to try out different meditation techniques or breathing techniques, you know, whatever, like, you know, you maybe sometimes it's where you have the most resistance to, you know, sometimes for me, it's like these days, sometimes like gratitude exercises, you know, like, like feeling gratitude, you know, and, and that's when I do that, you know, sometimes I feel like, no, I shouldn't do this, you know, and then, then especially then I I know I have to do it because, you know, that's something like there's some resistance there. Like I'm going to go there, you know, and with breathing, it's also like, we want to strengthen those brain breath connections and we all have, we can all breathe better. Like the diaphragm is the most important muscle in our body. You know, I promise. And like, the one thing like toddlers and babies only breathe through their belly, you know? So we all breathe through our belly because the chest muscles to breathe through the chest are only being developed at the age of two or three. So for me, evolutionary, it also makes sense that we only, that we start learning how to breathe through our belly and then we learn how to breathe through our, add to breathe oh. through our chest. So, you know, we have a very wholesome breath to a whole chest for the belly and chest. And, you know, if anybody who listens, just try that, you know, just try to take maybe 11 deep inhales, try to expand your belly first, then your chest and take a sigh, you know, take just 11 times. And I, I promise you, if you don't feel any different than before, that maybe don't do breath work, you know, but if you really think you really did a balloon belly inhale, Mm. and the letting go exhale and you you know if you feel a little bit lightheaded dizzy it means you change your blood chemistry and so that's where it starts you know and that's where you start to to improve your breathing muscles you know how to feel better and you know that's that's what got me to feeling happy and healthy and i think everybody has can breathe better like i can breathe better you know all the time and it's, it's something that that can always improve i can always you know express more gratitude be kinder and stuff and, and so those things, you know, like th- there's always the skepticism that arises, you know, we're human bodies and uh, human minds. So um, I think, you know, I- I'd like to invite everybody to try out, you know, like breathing techniques and and see how you feel. You know, obviously you want to be comfortable with the person who's teaching it. And um, that's also a big part of that. So, yeah, um, gonna, but yeah, I, I, trying it out. I'm, I'm going to take you, you, one thing that you said that I love that I didn't really think about. So thank you was when you feel a resistance, it's a sign to do it. Oh, my God. I love that. Mm-hmm. That it's so, yeah it's the same it, with the cold I mean? it's the same with the yeah. cold it's, it's always this last thing of like you know like if you go into the cold shower it's like this last thought like why should i do this you know and then it, and then you're in the cold shower and then you start to tense and it's like you know like if you relax your shoulders as you breathe slow breathe in deeper and exhale slower you you can tolerate the cold better you know but it's like this counterintuition that kind of mm-hmm. skepticism that arises because you know quite frankly like in the society like profit has been driven by pharmaceuticals by skepticism and stuff so we're very trained to be very skeptical and trust pharmaceuticals and stuff not like that pharmaceuticals are essentially bad but you know like there's a bigger industry behind it and that's coming back to what you said before we don't hear about breathing that much because it's free and there's no lobbyism behind this nobody's you know bombarding us with advertisement there's no car insurance you know level like uh, you know, like funding <laughs> you, to like breathe, promote breathing if you awareness. you breathe, you get a discount. <laughs> yeah, 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 you yeah. Know, that's why, like, you have to. We have to, like, I don't know. Maybe that's what obviously we're doing. With our company bringing breathing awareness into people's life, and you know, hopefully, incentivizing at some point people to breathe better and stuff. But you know, it's, uh, there hasn't really been that market and stuff. And hopefully, they will spread more. And um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So but it's much, free, everybody. Yeah. So go. Uh, let's talk about your AI. Like, firstly, is it up yet, or is it is it coming? Actually, we, we're just in private beta right now. So um, people can sign up still right now today yeah. on the breathing, breathing.ai um, website. But we might actually, 
maybe you know this week or so so people should check in maybe even like in a few hours we might have like yeah. the public beta I, I, I've out i've got so, a uh, I'm, I'm, i've just signed up but i i was reading and going oh my god i thought it was up and i was so excited and then i thought oh, i have to wait so do you want to just <laughs> run through what it does because it's a brilliant idea and i really oh, thank you. love the way that you've incorporated that into daily day life so explain what it is nice. thank you so much yeah we are detecting breathing patterns or heart rate through the webcam um, or the phone's camera later on. Right now, the webcam. So, you know, you install, a, we have a product out that's a browser extension. So, you would install it on the browser and then you can, you know, allow our program to detect your breathing and heart rate pattern. We don't store identifiable information. And then we, you know, personalize the color filters, the brightness to, to learn like to your breathing pattern. So, you know, breathing slower, breathing deeper has a lot of health benefits. So you don't, you know, have to do breath work. It would just do it, adapt like a color filter and the brightness to your breathing patterns. And then we also give break reminders. You know, a lot of people are uncomfortable with installing a meditation app, doing a 20 minute meditation. So we just have very like simple, you know, 20 seconds to two minutes meditation. And sometimes it's just posture. You know, if somebody doesn't like meditation, we have like, you know, sit, you know, relax your shoulders, you know, blink your eyes. Because, you know, we, oftentimes we, we don't blink our eyes enough or you know, take a deep breath and stuff. So, and then there, there's meditation techniques too. So it's very simple and very short, quick break reminders that, you know, people can also set up manually. People can set up the color filters manually. So we can, they can use the vital sign detection, you know, with using the webcam and machine learning, but they can also, you know, just manually use it and then they don't share any data at all. And I mean, the, it's not data sharing, it's just being processed for in yeah. um, temporarily. So everything is very secure. Um, we've done research on this for many years. Actually, like the, the code to detect vital signs is one of the state of the art codes in the world right now. So uh, and we have a patent on this technology too. We all, only want to use it for well-being. So um, yeah, it's a it's like a breathing.ai uh, yeah. right now browser extension. And I think that because more people are working from home, like you know, I'm working all day today and I've got my watch and it does tell me to take a break. But of course, it's telling me to take a break when I'm with you. <laughs> so, it's, it's, <laughs> what? so it's sort of counterintuitive. Uh, so that it's good that you, so can you, I, just so I get my head around it, the color thing is, say if I get a blue color, that would mean uh -huh. that I need to breathe a particular wave, does it? And then oh, the no, color no, uh, how does the color work? The, the the break reminders are coming also up to to you know if you're getting too stressed and stuff um, later on. But the the screen filter is just, you know, so um, there's, for instance, Flux and there's Screen Shader, different programs that, that give you like a, a color filter oh. over the whole screen. Wow. So, you know, okay. it, like, it dims it dims the blue wavelengths and it's supposed to, you know, make you help you sleep better and reduce the brightness. There's actually recent studies right now, the last few months um, being published that show like if it might not be dark mode or grayscale that help people sleep better, but it might actually be just like dimming the brightness of the screen, you know, because oftentimes the brightness of the screens are very bright yes. and we forget about it. And then, you know, and then we were very stressed, our heart rate goes up and stuff and we don't fall asleep that well, or we, we're more stressed. So our program recognizes, you know, what kind of color filter for some, it might be bluish filter for some, it might be grayish for some, you know, oranges. So different people respond to different environments, right? And we're like, we're, we're all different human beings in growing up in different conditions. So different colors, different brightnesses, different, you know, smells and audio have different uh, impact on us. And so, so our technology really personalizes the screen experience to each user and then just provides a color filter or a different brightness and then um, personalized break reminders too. Yeah, and it makes sense because when I went from the clinic to doing online, I couldn't understand why I was getting migraines for the first mm. few months and then i bought this i bought i got like a filter that it isn't like it only does partial work but i love mm -hmm. the idea of the screen changing color to, to to work with me i mean that would be something that everyone would want <laughs> you know oh, hopefully the, hopefully yeah so is there so the information is it is do you have a link that i can apply to this podcast yes it's like just breathing.ai like inhaling accent breathing.ai okay. Yeah. And people can like either like maybe we still have the waitlist oh, no. up or maybe maybe there's a link to the to download the browser extension and then people can try it out. Um, love to get their feedback. We have like also our email there and uh, for like, yeah, we have like different different versions of that. And uh, we're always iterating like we have a very dedicated, passionate team, um, very, you know, user testing all the time so yeah breathing.ai and yeah i would love to I'll for make you sure, to try it out i make sure i pass on every every bit of information to everyone 
Um, oh, thank, Hans, you. thank you so much for spending your Sunday afternoon uh, with us. So you, the sun's still out, so go and enjoy the rest of your, your afternoon and nice. your day. And um, yeah, we'll pass all this information on. And thanks again for being on the podcast. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye. You've been watching the Secret Men's Business Podcast. The podcast will be out on Monday. And don't forget to hit subscribe and get notified of our up and coming podcasts. Okay, guys, have a great week. And don't forget to do your breathing. Bye. Mm-hmm.